worked for uh, Bank of America, and then mm -hmm. I worked for a church, and... Um, so you've been around money all your life. <laughs> Hey, beautiful people, it's Success Mentor Dante J. Worth, and I'm back with another video right here on Audacious Believer TV! Woo! Now, if this is your first time tuning in, I need you to make sure that make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you like this video. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you are commenting down below. My team and I absolutely love to read your comments. Now, tonight, we're being joined by the beautiful, the fabulous, the one, the only. Tell them who you are, darling. Maya Green. Woo! Talk about shifting from empathy to equity. Come on. Ooh, come on. Yes. <laughs> and before we talk about that, we're gonna talk about actually the question we ask every single guest. What is your story? Um, born and raised in Rochester, yes. and um, kind of just you know worked my way up throughout some different organizations. I worked for uh, Bank of America, and then mm -hmm. I worked for a church, and um, so you've been around money all your life. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're in the bag. Okay. <laughs> so you've been working for this point. What else, honey? <laughs> then I had the opportunity to work for a connected community. Shout out to my girl, the Shindo. <laughs> had an amazing time helping, uh, well, together, us building that organization up and being able to do some great things. And then this wonderful opportunity opened with the Community Foundation to come over and be their Program Officer of Equity. Yes! Equity! Yeah. She got program. Yeah, the Program Officer of Equity. She got some real good in this. She just got real serious! That's good! That's good! So, what has been the most exciting thing about your journey? Um... Realizing what my purpose is, you know, we put so much focus on passion and I'm really on this journey of learning what my purpose is and I'm realizing that it's people, right? My purpose is to be able to uh, support people in whatever way that looks like. Mm -hmm. And um, this is truly like my ministry, being able to help those in our community give back in a way. And, yes. um, you know, at one point I was doing the kind of boots on the ground and now I'm kind of doing it in a different way. So yes. it's been a great, you know, journey trying to figure out who is Maya? Like, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? That's it, but you're doing it, honey. I'm you're doing it. You're not trying. You're not trying. You're not trying. You're doing it. <laughs> That's good. So, what advice do you have for someone who's like you who is struggling to find their purpose? What advice do you have for them? Um, well, I think you know your purpose. I think purpose is something that you do know. I think one of the things that we have to to spend time on is moving out all of these passions. Sometimes passion will be your purpose, but I think we allow a lot of people to say, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. You know, it took me almost. 15 years to go back to school, right? Because I needed to make sure that, one, uh, if I was going to spend this money, okay. I knew okay. what I was going Sally to Sally don't play. They don't play. They don't play. No. <laughs> Sally don't play. None of them play. They want their coins. Yes. So I think, you know, just spending time journaling and figuring out what is it that you like to do? What, yes. what you know, excites you about? Mm. What's going to help you get up every day? And um, go ahead and do that. That's good. Talking about empathy, is empathy enough when in creating equity in our community? Yeah, I think, well, I think there's a difference. Okay. So I think, let's talk about sympathy. I think that's mm. where we want to move people from. Okay. But empathy, I mean, it really is that whole um, being, well, equity would be like empathy in action. Mm. So if we can get people to really start to look at how they look at things and move from sympathy and being like, oh, little boy, mm. oh, little, oh, little Tink Tink, oh, little tink -tink mm. over here. And so they're saying, well, hold on, what's going on with Tink Tink, right? Mm -hmm. What's going on with, mm -hmm. with little Johnny and them? And really start to look at them as an individual versus a group. Mm. We can start to have, you know, that's empathy, right? And yes. saying like, well, Dante, what's really going on with right. you, right? right? And not just everyone around you and kind of really um, focusing on that. I think we can then start to work on the equity that we need to oh, That's there. good. That's good. So how do you, as a person who feels voiceless, who doesn't feel like they have any equity in our community, how, what can they do to raise their voice and be heard? Yeah, I think it's really important. One of the things that we really are trying to work on is make sure that those folks have a seat at the table. Mm. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, I'm thankfully blessed not to be in poverty, so mm -hmm. I can't speak from that, that lens. Mm -hmm, you know, I mm -hmm. can help in, uh, with the conversation, but I yes. need to make sure that those people are at the table, that their voice is heard. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I spend a lot of time in the community in the evenings being able to 
talk to people and go to different events so I can learn and, and learn from them. Um, those are the things. We, we really need to have those people at the table. Like, so while we want people to be able to help with this, it's very important that they slide on over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they slide on over. Okay. So the folks who are actually <laughs> impacted by poverty and educational issues and things of that sort, we hear them. What did it feel like when you first sat down at that big table? Honey. Honey. <laughs> Just myself real quick. <laughs> it felt good. I had a lot of support. That's good. Um, you know, this was a, a process getting here, but um, I had a lot of support. I think, and one of the first things I did when I got at the, the, a bigger table is I got a mentor. Mm. I had a mentor who could take me who was already here at this table well. and could open up the. <laughs> do this well you yes. know I think sometimes in all honesty we only get one shot to do Ooh. this and I need to make sure that I'm doing this well um, so I got a mentor so I brought my mentor to the table uh, with me in a, in a way <clears throat> so that I could uh, have someone to call on so shout out to my mentor shout out mentor it's <laughs> so what has been the most liberating thing about your job like what is the most liberating thing that you've done or that you want to do in your in your position excuse me uh, liber <laughs> um Man, I think, well, first of all, the foundation is just amazing. Yes, like, it is. Yes, yes. Come on! Come on! Come on! Um, I think being able to create in a way that uh, I hadn't had a chance to create. Oh. So being able to say, like, okay, this is what we're looking to do, and this is what I would like to do, and being able to have that conversation with my VP of programs and say, I want to do this. What do you yeah. think? And <clears throat> there may be some pushback. Um, I'm also uh, blessed to work with some great colleagues. So I have a, a colleague who um, is my counterpart. She does program, she's a program officer of Vitality. So she does a lot of the arts okay. and being able to collaborate with her is one of those great things. So how do we um, do arts and education? How do we you know, bring that into the schools? Or how do we do things of that sort? So just being able to create in a way that I hadn't had a chance to. That's good. So for you, moving forward, I know that in your position that you work with grants and help, helping people, is it helping people locate grants? What is your actual, <laughs> before I thought like, so girl, they're like, she can give away free money and stuff, like. Don't call me tomorrow, that's what But I'm my money, God they say you got bags, and I want one. Call Dante, call Dante. So yeah, tell the people what you do. So the Community Foundation is an endowment organization, and what we do is, uh, through the donors and funds that we are able to uh, make grants to the, the, uh, the community. So we focus on Monroe County and the surrounding eight counties. So um, we will, you know, grant funds to different organizations and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. In my particular role, <clears throat> Program Officer of Equity, I focus on race, poverty, and education. Oh. So I work with a lot of different organizations to be able to see, uh, to see what they're doing and how we can potentially help um, and we also work with other funders in there to see what they're doing and yes. yeah so that's what I do. Come on, get you some care of the bag, man. You've been doing the bag for a long time. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> what is the one thing that you hope to accomplish by the time you leave this world? Like what's the one impact that you want to leave on this world? Oof. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. You don't know, girl? That's okay. That's the answer, girl. I ain't gonna be crazy. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. That's a good question. I think I'm gonna have to come back to you okay. Not, next time. Part two. Part two. Part two. Part two. Okay. <laughs> are you ready for rapid fire questions? Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> Favorite book. She said she was ready. <laughs> um, the Bible. Oh, you gotta say it like you know the Bible. <laughs> Favorite movie? Imitation of Life. Ooh. Yes, yes, yes. What is your favorite quote? I don't have a favorite mm -hmm. quote. Um, let me stop lying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me just think about it. 
<laughs> she like, I don't believe him. Uh, when people show you who they are, believe them. Mm, my yeah. Angelo. And what do you see when you look in the mirror? Um, I see a go-getter. You know, mm. my father had a saying that no one can outwork me, and that is, uh, I'm trying to do that in a healthy way, like still with self-care. Yeah, right? No one can outwork me. That's good, that's good. To be audacious means to be? Uh, to be Maya. Mm. Oh, Maya, to be audacious, believer, ow! So tell the people how they can find you online, how they can support you. You can find me online. Uh, I have a Facebook account. Yeah. I have an Instagram account, Maya Crane. And you can always, if you want more information about the Community Foundation, you can look me up at the Rochester Area Community Foundation. Um, and yeah, give me a call. That's good. They're going to be sending you their cash apps later on today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cash me. Don't cash me. Where are all your cash app requests? <laughs> Dante said you had all the money. Until next time, remember that life is meant to be enjoyed and not just endured. <laughs>